Hello, everyone. Welcome to another International Relations Capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today we discuss the latest Quad meeting, the quadrilateral meeting in Tokyo, which concluded yesterday. You are aware of the origin and development of this grouping, uh, which had taken different shapes and sizes, not sizes, maybe shapes, in the last few years. And it came into being as some kind of a security dialogue in a formal way after the Chinese action in Ladakh in 2020. Till then, India was rather reluctant uh, to give it any kind of an alliance format. Uh, but it became a formal kind of a grouping. And also we had other groupings like AUKUS at the same period. Uh, this meeting was held in Tokyo against the backdrop of a new development, which is the emergence of Russia as a uh, country of concern because of its attack on Ukraine, as well as its uh, close linkages with China. Because the concern of the uh, Quad countries, or democratic countries in the Pacific region, uh, were concerned about the expansions policies of China. So though it was not specifically spelt out as something which is to counter China, it was quite obvious that that was the, was the purpose. But most of the things they did were of general interest to various countries. There are military exercises, et cetera, but it was more of a dialogue and a cooperative body rather than a military alliance, because India had always not agreed to any military alliance. But the complication which arose was when the war started in Ukraine and the Western countries started countering Russia to weaken it with uh, various sanctions and so on. And naturally the United States as the leader of NATO was also interested in energizing uh, Quad against Russia also, not only China. And this was because Russia and China had come to sign an agreement, a kind of treaty, which unlimited cooperation, and they became virtually partners uh, in that uh, arrangement. This happened just before uh, Russia invaded uh, Ukraine, uh, but this gave a new dimension to it. And therefore, there was a meeting in Melbourne where I talked about it to you some time ago, where the Americans, the Australians, and the Japanese wanted to bring in this issue of uh, Ukraine as a threat to security about which India should, I mean, the Quad should uh, be concerned. Uh, but India, as you know, had taken a neutral position on this issue, and therefore we are not willing to bring that into the agenda of the Quad. And this created some unpleasantness. Uh, many countries questioned India's uh, abstention at the United Nations on these issues, because how is it that a democracy is supporting an authoritarian state, and particularly because Russia and China are collaborating with each other. So we took the position that we have certain interests and we'll protect them, uh, but we are of course against any kind of war, any kind of violation of uh, uh, borders, territorial integrity, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, uh, you may remember I talked about the rise in a dialogue where many European countries came and questioned us again on this. So it was against this backdrop that uh, the Quad met. And it was obvious that the three other countries must have pressed India uh, to take a different position. We don't know. There's nothing has been mentioned. Uh, though all the three countries are supposed to have raised this issue in the Quad meeting. But India stuck to its position that we are opposed to war. We would like to have reconciliation, diplomatic resolution, and not any condemnation. And that position seems to have been accepted by the rest of the Quad. And therefore, they set this aside, the issue of Russia, and decided to design a number of measures uh, to meet the continuing threat in the Indian Ocean region, Indo-Pacific region. And here, Russia 
went on to the side of the Chinese because they raised even the question of the name of uh, Indo-Pacific. They wanted it to be retained as Asia-Pacific. And that is one issue on which China and Russia think alike. And naturally, we would not like to change this nomenclature. So therefore, Russia and China's collaboration on this issue became a little stronger. So what we see in the joint statement, which has been issued after the uh, Quad meetings in Tokyo, there are also bilateral meetings and so on, where all these issues may have been uh, discussed. So it has come out with a broad agenda to confront the looming political and economic crisis. So it's not just the political, it is not just the expansionism of China that is threatening the world, but there are many other things, including the, the pandemic itself, the Ukraine war, and the emerging tendencies around the world, terrorism, sectarianism, all these issues. So what, it, what has come out of uh, the Quad meeting in Tokyo, in a nutshell, is that it has now a more composite agenda, uh, which includes all the threats to humanity in general, and particularly in the context of Asia Pacific and the security of these four democratic uh, countries. So with this expanded agenda, our prime minister called uh, the Quad a force for good. So he emphasized the more positive aspects of it. So it will not be against anybody, but it will be it will work in its own interest as a force of good, force for good, without mentioning any of its military aspects. So this is the new development. But however, all the discussions showed that there was no doubt that the Chinese threat was the reason for Quad to become a robust partnership. And after China and Russia declared an alliance without boundaries and declared an, uh, and attacked Ukraine, uh, the Russia also became a matter of concern for the Quad. Uh, so as I mentioned, Russia even objected to the name of uh, Indo-Pacific. But the Quad did not take any united action or united stand against Russia because of India's neutrality. Uh, both China and uh, Russia knew the danger of the Quad coming up with a new agenda. And therefore, China uh, promptly protested even before the conference. And the Japanese have been reporting that even while the um, Quad conference was being held in Tokyo, not only Chinese fighter planes, but also Russian fighter planes flew over Tokyo uh, to give an indication of their objection to what was going on. Uh, so their concern is that uh, Quad may become an adjunct of NATO. And uh, that was the message that they wanted to give that if, if they did that, uh, there would be danger of escalation. Uh, it is quite clear that in the and we know from reports that uh, uh, these countries, you know, Japan, Australia, and the US raised the question of Ukraine, and India maintained its position that the focus should be ending the conflict and the tragic uh, humanitarian crisis. But the differences between India and the rest of the Quad uh, seem to have been resolved, or at least narrowed down to what is fundamentally necessary. Uh, at the same time, the Quad announced several measures to counter China without naming it, to enable the partnership to, partners to monitor the Indo-Pacific region to ensure peace and stability there. So one of the essential uh, strategic moves by Quad is to expand their information and knowledge about what is happening in the Indonesia. So several measures were taken, and many of them were to be able to follow developments in Indian Ocean and also take out the measures as necessary. Uh, the first thing that they did was in the joint statement. Uh, they have mentioned the several principles. These are not new at all. 
but they reiterated them in a systematic, I mean, as a list of the principles that Quad will follow. Uh, these are, of course, well known, like the principles of freedom, uh, rule of law, democratic values, sovereignty and territorial integrity, peaceful settlement of disputes without resorting to threat or use of force, any unilateral attempt to change the status quo and freedom of navigation and overflight, all of which are essential to the peace, stability, and prosperity of the Indo-Pacific region and the world in general. So this is the crux of, or the heart of the joint statement that they repeated. These are all well-known principles. But when you repeat that in this context, the meaning is very clear that somebody is violating these. And everybody knows who that somebody is, who that two countries are. So they said that we will continue to act decisively together to advance these principles in the region and beyond. And then they said, we reaffirm our resolve to uphold the international rules-based order where countries are free from all forms of military, economic, and political coercion. So the reiteration of these principles makes it clear that the Quad does not approve much of what is happening in the world and the criticism of some of the actions of China and Russia is implicit in the joint statement. That is very clear. Then what are these measures they have outlined? The first one is called Indo-Pacific Indo Maritime Domain Awareness, IPMDA. The idea is it will offer, it looks like an American initiative and they have promised to provide the countries um, effective, integrated maritime domain awareness. So it's a euphemism for following all the lightly military activities in the Indonesian region. And, then, and uh, this was extended not only to the uh, Quad countries, but also its partners in the South Pacific Island states, as you know, where there have been moves by China in Solomon Islands and others. And that is what they have in mind. And Southeast Asia, of course, most of these countries, China is making inroads. And so they are saying that they will provide independent programs to these countries to monitor the developments in region. And they affirm their commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific that is inclusive and resilient and vow to work tirelessly to deliver tangible results in the region. So these are all words which clearly indicate that the, there are serious concerns about Russia and China among these countries, and they will take uh, preventive measures. And Quad also this time spoke a little about the other hotspots in the world. For example, it supported complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and condemned North Korea's destabilizing nuclear and missile tests. This is again a common Western position, but we also sympathize with that. Um, then um, it also called for the immediate end of violence in Myanmar and restoration of democracy there. Here, of course, India's uh, view is slightly different. We are a little more tolerant of the military regime because we have vital interests in, uh, in Myanmar. But we support the initiatives taken by many countries, particularly ASEAN countries, to bring back democracy in uh, Myanmar. But we have not made it conditional. We are continuing our cooperation with the military, particularly because we feel that if we keep away, the Chinese will have a walkover. And therefore, India has joined in this call for democracy, but at the same time, may not like to take any action. And um, it is in our favor that the Quad took a very strong position against terrorist attacks, including, they mentioned the cross-border attacks, and named the Mumbai and Pathan Court attacks. You know who? As for Afghanistan, it demanded that Afghan territory must never again be used to shelter or train terrorists. 
So what the joint statement says about terrorism is very much India's perspective. And the other countries also face the same threat and therefore on terrorism, there was a very strong position taken. And coming to a more soft agenda of the uh, Quad, which were outlined in uh, uh, Tokyo, global health and combating COVID have been assigned a very high, risk, high priority in the activities of the Quad. Sadly, as you know, during the height of the Quad, there was hardly any international cooperation. And it was India which slowly started international cooperation, started distributing. You know, we had this vaccine Maitri program. It was all not very successful because people were still suspicious of these things. But we are the ones who started off, uh, you know, international cooperation in uh, fighting against the Quad. And the last meeting, there was also an agreement that uh, US will, US and Japan will, uh, US will provide the funding, Japan will provide the technology, and India will do most of the manufacturing, and then uh, distributed with Australia's assistance. Some kind of a program was made, and this was reinstated is reasserted and they said that the danger is not gone away and the countries must cooperate and several measures were outlined. Then turning to another uh, soft agenda, which is the climate change. So Quad will steadfastly implement the Paris Agreement. As you know, the Paris Agreement is, is still in existence and that has been, of course, uh, amended by the COP26 in Glasgow. So, uh, and therefore, it launched the, uh, the Quad launched the Quad Climate Change Adaptation and Mitigation Package. With uh, you know, the mitigation is uh, resolving the problems, reducing the problems raised by climate change, and adaptation is to in such situations where you cannot change, adapt ourselves to the situation and make changes in your lifestyle, et cetera. So both mitigation and adaptation are important elements in fighting climate change, and this was asserted. And then on security, advancing cyber security has also been identified um, as a priority for improving the defense capabilities of the partners. So if you read the joint statement, you will find the anxiety about the military aspect very much there. And that India has also implicitly accepted it. Uh, but at the same time, we have not allowed it to turn it into a military alliance. And, that, and also emphasized that peace and tranquility are dependent not only on military security, but also other aspects like cyber security, uh, climate change, terrorism, etc. Et so what we have today for the Quad is a comprehensive agenda. And that I would say is the, uh, the, the achievement of the Tokyo summit. If you are asked, you could say that it had a general agenda, it was complicated, uh, but an agreement has been reached about a comprehensive agenda going beyond the security dialogue because non-conventional threats that we mentioned like climate change and terrorism and, uh, 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 and other priorities have come up. And so we have the security aspect on one hand, then we have the other aspects like COVID and, uh, and the climate change. So the Quad with a shared uh, vision and uh, for a free and open Indo-Pacific, has emphasized the importance of fundamental values and principles and committed to work tirelessly to deliver tangible results to the region. It has also agreed to maintain a continuous dialogue among themselves. And uh, it was agreed that also there will be a, a summit in Australia next year. The, what has really happened is the complications which arose because of Russia getting into the act and becoming a, a party or a counter to the Quad. And that created some 
or shall we say some ripples and our position was criticized by the other three sometimes very softly but sometimes rashly so nobody was very sure that uh, how the tokyo meeting will emerge so what has happened is that india's position has been understood and uh, they have tried to contain it that the agreement in the consensus reached and they have now an agenda which is global uh, which could uh, counter not only the chinese threat but also the other threat threats in the region so in a sense this meeting has been in advance and uh, we can expect that in the depending on what happens in ukraine when the weather when the war ends there may be a better possibility of a better understanding of the situation uh, but the present agenda of the united states to weaken russia to defeat it is something which india does not subscribe to so we will concentrate on the other ideas and wait for the end of the war but one thing is clear is that we will not condemn anyone we will simply work with everybody for peace and the resolution of conflicts so the principles have been established a structure has been created an agenda has been made so now it's a matter of implementation to make the indo pacific more peaceful and more productive thank you very much i noticed it for me also it is a new new formulation so obviously it means a secret uh, passage because very often many of these war, warships etc when they go through these uh, areas they do not identify themselves unless contracted so this has happened and uh, this is being done by both sides and uh, once you may remember that an american uh, ship came into our territorial waters and we raised objections but that is a usual thing that they do and uh, but this is the time, first time i am seeing it in a, in a document of this kind and obviously this is a danger that they anticipate that ships may come into the region without proper uh, permissions and intimation because when they, they come into our region uh, like in our territorial waters or the economic zone certain formalities are required and uh, somebody must be dodging it maybe the chinese and that must be the reason why they are talking about dark ships i don't know whether it has any other technical definition that we will look up